Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to Cupertino, California. So Apple have invited me out to experience their September event. Uh, now this is traditionally their iPhone event and of course today was that. So they had the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro. There was also updates to the Apple Watch, the iPad 7th generation and a few announcements on their services. So I've been following the Apple keynotes and watching them almost religiously for the last 15 years or so. And this event today for me has literally been about 10 years in the making. So dating back to 11 years ago when I first actually started working at Apple to eight years ago when I left Apple, I've slowly been sort of fine tuning the way to get myself here today. So I'm so excited to finally be here. And I went to the event this morning and then followed that with a hands-on experience of the new products that were launched today. And uh, I've got some thoughts to share about that. Uh, in particular, we're gonna be talking about the iPhone 11 and the 11 Pro from the perspective of photography and filmmaking. So if you're new around here, this channel is all about travel photography and uh, I share videos going to destinations and capturing images in those destinations. The new iPhone looks like it could be a serious contender for my camera bag. If you don't know already, I already use the iPhone 10 quite a lot in my videos uh, alongside my GH5, which is what's filming right now. But with some of the improvements and announcements that were made today, I think I'm gonna be using it a little bit more. So uh, yeah, we're gonna run through some of my hands-on first impressions. And uh, I will of course be making some more detailed videos over the coming weeks with those new devices. I'm looking to get my hands on them for a little bit longer and um, I'll be posting those. So make sure you do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification to get updates of when those videos will be going live. So as with all smartphone comments and content and opinions, it should always be caveated that I am a firm believer that you should use the devices that match your expectations to the reality of the device. There's one thing in particular that always keeps me on iOS and that is the camera. But it's not just the photography camera, it's actually the video. It's video that really stands out to me and that's what always holds me. I don't think anyone actually does video anywhere near as good as Apple does. And uh, this new update really is significant on the video front. So as I mentioned, this is a first look from today's announcements and I'm not necessarily gonna be nitpicking through all the spec sheets and stuff. There are plenty of other videos of people who do that and Apple's own website itself. Before we get into any of the specs and features, let's talk about the design. So the iPhone 11 remains fairly unchanged from the 10 and the 10s with some incremental differences. So one of the first differences you'll notice between the previous design and the new one is the finish on the back. We've now got a matte finish. I personally was never that much of a fan of a gloss phone and I actually opted for the D brand matte black skin anyway. There's also been some incremental updates to the durability of the iPhone and even increase in resolution and screen quality on the 11 Pro with the Super Retina XDR display. There is still a notch at the top of the display. I've never really noticed it when using my 10, but it's a shame the tech hasn't advanced faster to reduce the sizing since it first came about a couple of years ago. So on the back, there's a clear difference to the camera array on both the 11 and 11 Pro. With the 11, we've got two camera options, but no longer do we have a wide and telly. We've now got an ultra wide and a wide lens. Uh, that's in some ways different to what I expected. I personally love shooting with the tele lens on uh, my iPhone 10, but it is nice to have an ultra wide. On the 11 Pro, we've got an ultra wide, a wide and a tele lens. So a total of three cameras to choose from. And to be honest, this is like a, a nice little trinity of lenses and um, really is quite the, uh, quite the selection. Alongside the usual processor boost and incremental upgrades we see on an annual basis, this year's iPhone features some significant camera improvements. There's also a new pro camera mode for both photography and video. Both seem very promising with a lot of processing happening to make smooth transitions between each of the lens options. And one thing that's always nice with Apple is that what you see through the screen as a viewfinder is actually what you get on the end. You don't have processing happening after the fact except for the portrait lens. And I think this is just very true of Apple's philosophy of just making things seamless. So yes, it does mean that they are maybe late to the game compared to other cameras, but generally I think the experience is always better. During the event this morning, Filmic Pro were invited on stage to demo their new app release that's set to come out later this year, and it looks seriously impressive. So you can actually record through multiple of the cameras at the same time, all while supporting their processing of the flat picture profiles or log video and other features. This is actually really, really impressive. There's also been some cinematic stabilization improvements to the cameras uh, that looks to take advantage of the new processor inside. So you can start to see that the processor is actually really benefiting a lot with these cameras quite significantly. The front facing camera also surprised me as they've now made it 4K 60p up from 1080 on the previous models. 
essentially making this a great vlogging option alongside my existing setup. If I wanna vlog or if I wanna make something, I can film outwardly as well as internally, both in 4K. How insane is that? Sadly, with these pro modes, there's no raw photo option with the native camera. I actually can't understand why. It's available in third-party apps such as Lightroom for mobile, and other camera apps. The cameras can obviously do it, I just don't understand why Apple don't enable raw photo processing. A welcome change to the camera interface is the Instagram-like shutter button. So you can tap the shutter for photos as normal, you can hold it for video and slide to the right for a locked video mode, or you can slide to the left to do burst photos. Pretty nice. Throughout all these updates, there's a heavy nod towards the machine learning with this year's devices, and I'm excited to see more about Deep Fusion. So this is a technology to improve processing of textures, details, and noise in photos. Essentially, this offers the option to create higher quality and just overall better content. So if you're upgrading from an iPhone 10 or later, you may not necessarily be able to justify the cost of a brand new iPhone just yet. As, to be honest, the iPhone X, XS, and iPhone 8, they're still very capable options. However, I do think users will be seeing a huge improvement with this year's model. It's just whether you can justify the cost factor of it. Because let's face it, most flagship smartphones are pretty pricey these days. And as much as it's nice to have new features, our previous ones are still very much capable. So even though I do think this is kind of an incremental upgrade, it's almost like a XSS, it's not to say there hasn't been much improvement in the last couple of models, there absolutely has. So I've been using the XS Max over the last month and I was actually shocked at how much better the camera tech was over my 10. It shows that Apple kind of did a bad job at truly shouting about the improvements they made with last year's release and uh, I think this year they're kind of making up for it. So last year's stereo microphones and HDR video were the most notable differences for me and this year's ultra wide lens would likely be the top feature to shout about. So my overall thoughts on these iPhones from today's first impressions are generally quite positive. I'm a fan of the new color options, the matte finish, increased performance, more filming and photography capabilities such as night mode, as well as the drastically improved battery life and also the pricing didn't creep up much further as it has in recent years. So I think we've maybe hit the ceiling on pricing, hopefully. The 4K front facing camera is also a big feature that I'm really pleased to see. Unfortunately, the iPhone 11 still uses the lightning connection rather than unifying with the iPad Pro and MacBook lineup with a USB-C interface, but it's not the end of the world, I guess. It just would be nice to kind of have the one cable, the one port to cover everything. I'm really not a fan of the lack of the raw photo mode. I think that's a serious letdown, but equally that can be fixed with a firmware update. I just really hope they get around to doing it. So I'm really looking forward to putting the new iPhone through its paces. I'm gonna be shooting with it over the next few days and couple of weeks. I'm actually heading back to Japan tonight. So um, there's a lot to look forward to. So if you wanna see those videos, make sure you do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification and you'll be able to get the email updates that YouTube will send out when I upload. It's just one way to make sure that you actually do see them when I publish them. So if you wanna catch more of those videos, make sure you hit that bell, pretty simple. All right, thanks for watching everyone and I will see you in another video soon. See ya, bye bye.